And here's the thing that is absolutely murdering the freedom movement. I mean, annihilating, murdering it, brutally putting freedom to death. Okay. The atheist movement and atheism in the freedom movement is one of the most destructive ideologies that has ever existed in humanity. I am going to start referring to atheism as the great freedom destroyer. That's what it is. The great freedom destroyer. Because true freedom can never be obtained in a state of moral relativism. And because natural law can never be understood without understanding where the laws of behavior come from. And because right and wrong can never be created by human beings or granted or taken away from human beings. Rights can never be granted or taken away. Human beings don't get to decide what right behavior and wrong behavior is. Human beings are charged with the task of learning and understanding and discovering of what right behavior and wrong behavior is because all of those things are hinged upon right and wrong being ex existing in nature and the consequential laws that right and wrong are, have everything to do with and that govern human behavior are existing in nature and were put there by or sustained there by some form of intelligence or creator or nature itself. However you want to look at that, it's a higher power than man and it's not done by man. Atheism, by definition, an atheist is incapable of truly understanding natural law. Therefore, an atheist almost always rejects the existence of natural law, okay, and says that it's a belief system when in fact it is not. It constitutes a science of morality, meaning a knowing definitively of the difference between right and wrong behavior and how the consequences of taking wrong action negatively impact society where the consequence for actually living morally and taking moral behavior and right action enhances society as a whole in the aggregate and wor works toward greater levels of freedom, consciousness, expression um, of a uh, human being's potential and a whole society's potential. Okay. Atheism by definition obviates all of that and makes it impossible. No atheist can ever truly understand real freedom or how it is created and sustained. They can only flail about wildly and possibly come to a rudimentary understanding accidentally of some of the principles of how freedom operates. But I've never met an atheist that didn't have a hardened ego and wasn't completely opposed to an act actually looking at natural law and how it works and, and attempting to understand it. Because the first thing, as soon as they hear that natural law comes from a higher power than man, and that the laws of consequence are in effect due to a higher power than man, they're out. That's it. They're shut down. They shut off because their system of mentality is a religious belief system based on emotion, not based on rigorous investigation, based on observation and facts. They have a totally emotional reactionary dynamic in their minds. I've seen it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Okay. You will ask them how certain complexity has arrived at, and they'll say accidentally, which means they believe in chance that is far beyond any conceivable, um, probability and statistics. You know, they'll, some of them will even say, I've heard of atheists that say they believe in karma. And then when you say, where did it come from? They're like scratching their head. Because what is the answer? We invented karma? Because let's face it, folks, that's what natural law is, right? I could use the term karma and natural law practically interchangeably. Real karma is what natural law is, not the, you know, cartoon variant of karma that you do something wrong and immediately an anvil falls on your head, you know? It's, it's separated by time, distance, circumstance, culture aggregate behavior. The laws of real karma are very complex, you know, and it doesn't always manifest just in the physical world while you're alive. It's propagated through memory over time 
down to future generations and has an effect long in long standing stretches of time. This is why people can't readily see it. It is why it is of occult laws. Karma or natural law is of an occult nature, meaning it is not readily seen with our eyes, our normal five senses, which we perceive the physical world with. And it is not measured with traditional scientific instrumentation, like a, a digital caliper or a pair of uh, eclipse glasses. You're not going to detect natural law with those things. It involves a sixth sense of memory and observation over long periods of time. And that's what most people don't want to do and they have no sense of, and they have no long standing understanding or view of history. And that's why they fall into these things like the atheistic belief system that there is no higher power than man. It's like a fish denying the existence of water that's sustaining them and giving them life. It's the religious belief in a spontaneous, causeless, sourceless, purposeless, meaningless existence. And guess what? If you don't think that's what atheism is, folks, talk to some hardcore atheists. I'm not talking about agnostics here. I'm talking about people who say, absolutely, there's no power higher than man in creation. That we're the epitome of existence, that there's no uh, creative force or intelligence in nature, that nature is a mechanistic dead thing that exists for no purpose or reason. I'm talking about hardcore atheists here. They are scientific materialists. I can call them scientismic materialists. All right. And you know what it gets you? Totalitarianism and slavery. Because every totalitarian regime was backed by a total materialistic worldview that has ever existed. And that man is God. There's no power higher than man. So man is the lawmaker. Man is the authority. There is no natural law. There's only man's law and we get to decide what's right and wrong and we get to enforce it through brutality. That's what's gotten you. Atheism is what's gotten you every totalitarian regime on the face of the earth, folks. And again, I'm not advocating for religious belief. See, this is where people are in a totally rudimentary, childish understanding and trapped in a dialectic because people vacillate between religious fervor and atheism. When both of them are completely wrong, religious thought needs to be destroyed and atheism needs to be destroyed because it is religious thought. It's all religion, folks. It all holds us back from truth. It all holds us back from an understanding. So when I tell people I don't believe in any religion and I'm not an atheist either, I want the destruction of all of those things. They don't know what to think because their minds are so unidimensional and unevolved that they cannot perceive that there is something that goes beyond those two extreme false dialectics. And yet there is, it is the position that a higher power exists, puts natural law into effect, but also gives sentient beings free will to choose their behaviors. And it doesn't interfere in the process from that point. That means that the universe is governed by law, both physical and behavioral law, physical and spiritual law, all exists in the universe. And the randomized component that cannot be fully predicted is free will. This has been called the free will theory or the free will hypothesis. But if you really understand how this works, it's an actual science. It's not a hypothesis or a belief. Okay. The problem is most people don't have the grammar assembled to understand how it works and then to teach it. They don't have the trivium in hand and atheists are one of the core problematic figures of this. Okay. They're the people who are destroying the freedom movement daily. There are anarchists, people who consider themselves anarchists that are atheists. And in my presentation at seed called fake ass anarchists, I am going to explain that there is no such thing as a true anarchist who is an atheist. There is no such thing. You are only a atheist. Uh, you are only an anarchist in name only. If you claim to be an atheist, there is no true anarchy in atheism. It is impossible. It cannot be. Anarchy can never exist in a society that embraces atheism any more than anarchy can exist in a society that embraces moral relativism. 
Freedom cannot exist in an atheistic society and freedom cannot exist in a morally relativistic society. Impossible according to cosmic law. And nothing will ever make it so. You can beat your head and fists on the table till the end of time. It will never be true. It can never be true. Those things can never exist simultaneously. Get as offended as you like. But yet, that's where most people are at in the freedom movement. And they believe that you're going to create freedom with the exact same underlying ideology that has created every totalitarian regime in the history of humanity. Yep. We're going to pour more gasoline and throw more matches on an existing home that's burned down and it's going to magically rebuild itself. That's how it works, don't you know? Yeah.